Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you all for being here. So what I want to do today is that I want to talk a little bit about the procedure and the protocol in great detail about how we intercede for others. How do we pray? How do we give some healing, um, uh, create energetic support? Uh, how do we uh, guide humanity? into the ascended tomorrow. It is clear with everything that's going on around the world and all of these climate change events and uh, unusual accelerated shifts that are taking place, that we are moving to something that's very quick and very accelerated. And uh, many of us, or um, forgive me if I sound slightly nasal, it's because I have a head cold. I'm, I'm otherwise fine, but I have a head cold. Uh, so, um, so what what's going on is that because of this, many many individuals cannot process how quickly these shifts are taking place. Whether it is climate change stuff, whether it is you know the, those two major hurricanes that went through in less than two weeks across um, the, the, the South of America, the, of the United States, um, um, you know, uh, wildfires that are still burning in Southern California. Um, uh, I have friends in the, um, in, in the uh, Mojave Desert who are still calling me and telling me the smoke is still choking them. Um, and, and all of these events, plus the political and the social stuff that all really out of the box, causing all kinds of inks and all kinds of uh, anxiety, if not complete fear. There's a reason for all of this, and we're going to get into it. So it is clear that our karma, the karma of the planet is being accelerated, meaning things are moving way faster then normally it will occur. And, and, and what I mean by karma, karma in Sanskrit actually means to do or to make. In Hebrew, the word is tikkun, and tikkun translates into repair and correction. It is not a state of passivity where you're a victim of cosmic law. So the idea every time someone was said, or oh, that's her karma, or oh, that's his karma, that immediately we think of some punishment of some kind. It's not a passive state. The way spiritual people understand karma, it is about doing something to change whatever negative um, uh, uh, situation may have happened in the past. It's about correction. So, and, 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 and therefore, it's important for us to spend the time to focus positively on the changes that are taking place for our benefit. Because believe it or not, with all the things that are happening in your life, all of us have issues that are out of the box. There is not one person on the planet that doesn't have issues. And whatever those issues are that are out of the box that are happening, we, we need to see them in the correct light and understand they are there for our benefit. And when the when we have a relationship with somebody else outside of ourselves that seems toxic, whether it's a friend or family member or an institution, a government agency, um, um, a club or a collective of people, whatever, co-workers, et cetera, et cetera, um, um, bosses, et cetera, whatever they may be, we need to understand that when you feel yourself being victimized in a past that you don't remember either recently or even further in past life, you offended the person who is going after you at this moment. So it's to try to 
remember, that's the first step of the healing, because all you need to do is to make the correction. And how do you make the correction to make sure that the karma is balanced? And the reason we're doing all of this is that no one ascends without doing or balancing 50, at least 51% of their karma. So the, the crucible of purification that the planet is going now, it's an accelerated, it's an accelerator for karma. So we need to figure out a way to, on some instances when the karma is coming too fast to slow it down. This is why when there are solar eclipse or lunar eclipse for that matter, a lot of wise men and women teachers are asking us, do not look at the sun. Do not go out and take a look at the sun. And like there was the ring of fire that happened a few days ago. I was indoor with curtain drawn because they are telling us when you look at the sun while an eclipse is going on, the light configuration that it passes through in less than, um, in this instant, it was a few hours, is the exact same thing that happened to the sun in one year. And in this instance, it happened between, I forgot, 11 o'clock to 5 p.m. or something like that, it, uh, noon to 5 p.m., uh, uh, which is like five hours. Uh, so because of this, your karma is going to be accelerated because the light of the sun, the sun is the indicator that guides everything through your uh, planetary system and to everything else that happens to you, it's gonna indicate, it's gonna, it's gonna trigger in your body. So if, you're tr if everything else is going so fast already, the last thing you wanna do is accelerate your karma. So if next time you see an eclipse coming, you should be indoors with your curtain drawn and not let that light drop upon you anywhere. You can see it on TV and ask somebody to send you a picture of it if they want to go out. I, I certainly don't want my karma to be accelerated. I've dealt with enough. I'm dealing with enough in my life already to have it be accelerated for, for me, right? So I, I'm saying this because I want you to understand the context of what I'm talking about, this idea of, of balancing our karma. Um, so the first thing to notice is that what, whoever may be your... Uh, 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 <clears throat> maybe uh, uh, going against you at this moment, you have karma with them, which means that in the past, recent past or past that you don't remember, you offended them. You, your family, your ancestors offended them. And so it's a matter of trying to remember the offense. In a lot of instances, if you're very intuitive, you can go in meditation and say, please forgive me, I love you, and I let go to the person long enough and open yourself up by, and keep querying and saying to yourself, I've done this and it has worked for me. What am I not seeing, thinking about the person? What am I not perceiving? What am I not understanding? The truth will set me free. Show me the truth. And as I go in meditation while doing this, I can see glimpses of the past life and the condition in which I was the perpetrator. I was the abuser. I offended. I see the offense. And the reason for this is that the only way that karma can be removed is by you asking forgiveness to the person that you offended um, um, and beg for their mercy and replace it with unconditional love. That's the only way. This is the way reconciliation occurs. So as we're doing this, situation will present themselves in your life, whether it's climate change situation, whether it is legal situation, whether it is uh, uh, health-related situation, et cetera, that will cause us to have these moments where we have to face our karma. We have to face the situation that, has, uh, um, um, that we haven't de maybe de dealt with that has the underlying feelings and emotions. So after first realizing the offense, you can go back and repeat the whole and open over again and over again to the person who you now realize you offended. Because a lot of time in my head, if somebody in my life, I've given plenty of example like this, somebody like a former student did something to me and I'm, 
And then two years later, I'm in the shower. I'm still thinking, what did I do to you? I don't understand. Why did you hurt me? So I, what, if this is happening to you, you're not, you haven't seen your 50%. There is a part you co-created. It's like a rubber band being held at two, at two point. You're holding a part two. So it's to understand your part. Or if you are incapable of creating um, um, self memory of this past life, go to somebody like me that does past life regression so that you can get full remembrance in one session of your offense. And the moment you get this, you can begin to um, ask when you say, please forgive me, think of the offense that you committed. Like for example, I was an I was a, a jerk. I was I was overbearing, and I I treated this person for very poorly. That's one particular example. I was a, a, a know it all. I treated this person very poorly uh, uh, in that past life. I I did not take counsel or hear what this person had to say to me at all. I thought I knew it all. So that was my offense. And this person in this lifetime, this is four thousand years ago, is still seeing me in the same light. Like I think I know everything. When in fact, that's I'm, I'm, I have changed in four thousand years. I'm not this person anymore. But I had to understand that's my offense, and I would have to say I said the opener to, to energetically to that person over and over again. Please forgive me. I love you. And then when I say please forgive me, I think of myself in that state, thinking that I know everything and I have all the answers. Please forgive me for being so overbearing. <clears throat> Please forgive me. I love you unconditionally. And I let go. And by repeating this over and over and over again, in a matter of two days, because I was able to remember, I had done it for three years before. Nothing was disconnected. I was still feeling, because I couldn't, I'm saying please forgive me, but I don't remember what I did. But the moment I did remember, it was easy for me to realize, okay, you were a complete jerk. Ask for forgiveness. And then the next thing you know, the energy being to peter out, peter out. The next thing you know, it's like paper thin and then it dissipated completely. Now, part two to this is for me to begin now to forgive myself for being imperfect in that past life, for being such a jerk and for being so broken and so egocentric and not giving somebody else an opportunity to contribute. So I had to forgive myself for that as well. Now that part is the hardest part in balancing your karma. When you acknowledge, it's one thing to ask somebody for forgiveness, okay? Either verbally, to the per if the person is in front of you, or energetically. But the part that's the most difficult is to forgive ourselves for having made mistakes and for being so broken and so human and imperfect. That part is the most complicated. And what you need to do at that moment when you see this, when you begin to perceive yourself as imperfect, as broken, is to give love to yourself is to accept yourself, is to care deeply for yourself and say, even though you were broken, I still love you. And this is profound because when, once you're able to do this and I accept you, I have compassion for you. The moment you begin to do this to all of your broken parts, it will, the true healing of that karma will begin. Because it's one thing to ask the person for forgiveness and have the energy disconnected. It's another thing to not play that tape in your head. How could I have done this in the past? How could I have mea culpa, mea maxima culpa, you know, self-flagellate. So the moment you're able to do this, the karma will begin to dissipate. And you don't have to deal with this anymore. The energetic... Uh, uh, dynamic between you and this body is over. You can move on. Any questions, any comments? 
Yeah, if, uh, if I may, what if the people are deceased that you've had uh, mm -hmm. in the past in this life, for instance, uh, some uncomfortable, let's say, moments with, um, how do you know that it's still active and that the past attempts to reconcile to the Ho'oponopono or uh, the process you described, how do you know if that has been resolved? Okay, good gauge. When you think of these, uh, of these individual, if you feel emotionally charged or raw when you think of them, it's not resolved. Oh, that's what you said. If, if you yeah. still going through what happened in your mind. And... Yes. And, and, and your mind is still regurgitating old things and it's still going back. It's not solved. It's and, not... and even if, at least by measure of, of intelligence that I tried to apply to it, I did not feel that I was incorrect in what I did. But if there was a response to me, yes was offensive that means that i have to go back to a past life well it, 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 it yes it, it may help you to understand the past life like like if you if you have past life with this person did i repeat the same thing again because you know we are not as smart as we think we are we keep echoing the same thing we repeat the same things over and over again it takes a long time before we go ah i should try something different so a lot of time, the dynamics and the patterns are the same for multiple. I've had so many clients that I'm, um, I'm taking the past life regression. Sometimes they go back over a million years. They're doing the exact same things over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Because when in the new life with the new, because when the dynamic is not balanced, these people, you, you will be attracted to the same parties. You will reincarnate with them. And because the karma is not balanced, and what feels familiar with you, that's what you lean into. Instead of saying, wait a minute, I did this before. It takes a lot of self-awareness to realize it is familiar, but I've done this before. I don't need to be in a partnership with you. I need to do something else. And, and my suggestion to you is that even if the person is deceased, energetically in your portion field, when you connect with them and you think of their name, wherever they are, you connect to them and you, you have a conversation. Right, right. But, but first it takes uncovering uh, your offense, your 50s. Yes, yes, yes. And, and if you don't even, and sometimes the offense is not in this lifetime. Maybe in this lifetime you turn it around. Who knows? But the offense might be, because if it's still raw, the offense might be in the past life. And you have to sit and be very honest with yourself if you're still raw and saying, okay, I'm not seeing something. What am I not seeing? Show me the truth. Let the truth be visible to me. And if you sit quietly after asking each of these questions, intuitively something will happen. Mm. Either a knowing or something will shift <clears throat> and you will begin to see. And if you are incapable of doing this, we, we can do a past life regression and you can always get that. But, but typically speaking, if you do this, you're going to get something. Something will show up. And you're able to see, ah, that this, is, this is, and sometimes it's, a, it's an instant knowing, like a wave that collapses, that passes through you. And you're like, wow, this is what this is. I get it now. I know what I did. I know what the offense is, and I can now ask for forgiveness for it. And part two, I can now accept myself in that past life as being imperfect, as being scared, fearful, you know, and, and even in some instances, vengeful, and re retaliatory. And please, and therefore, I'm going to forgive myself for, for being so small. Thank because I'm, I'm not this person anymore. I was that person in the past life, but I'm not this person anymore. But to that part of me that is still guilty for having done this, because we're still carrying the guilt. 
I'm loving you and I'm telling you it's okay. Mm. Sending you unconditional love. And when that happened, the karma began to drop. So it could be that in this lifetime you forg you, you, you said the one of Bruno and that, that you're, you're forgiven uh, I mean the, to, 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 to the other party and that's resolved. It could be that you're, you cannot forgive yourself. That's the part that's the hardest. Mm -hmm. Because we seem as light workers to think that we should be Christ-like and God-like immediately and not realize that our vulnerability and our humanity and our brokenness is the path that will lead us into our divinity. You have to first acknowledge that you're not perfect. You're broken. You've done all these things in your past. And this is what Kuan Yin did when she, before she became the Bodhisattva. She sat down and analyzed, uh, trying to figure out her karma with her dad that tried to kill her multiple times. <clears throat> and in the process of doing this, she realized it is by the grace of God that she's not like her father. That there's a part of her that was capable of doing equally uh, uh, the same thing or not worse. And that, that part of herself that her father is now fully embodied externally, that she has internally inside of herself, she had to forgive. And she had to send love to and heal and repair for being so um, sensitive, so controlling, because her dad was trying to control her. And for being so controlling and, 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 and desire to have everybody do his will. And the moment she did this, she was able to forgive her to dad even more. A step beyond that has just come to mind. Sometimes maybe we are part of a group body yep. that needs to be examined if a single person even responds to you as part of that group body, that it may not have been your individual yep. past tense, but the part of the family member yep. or the the race or the what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that's a great segue <clears throat> because that's the next part I'm going to talk about. Oh. <clears throat> the karma that we have individually with people is often connected <clears throat> to the epigenetic of our family. This is why the Onopono said in full liturgy say, if me, my family, and my ancestors have hurt you, your family, or your ancestors. Because <clears throat> often the offense is committed by a whole clan, an entire community, or a group body, or a grégoire that we belong to. And because of this, we have to understand what a group body is. So we belong to multiple group bodies. The fact that I am, your gender is a group body, it's a collective of people who are sharing the same trait as you. Your skin color, your race, your nationality, the fact that we're human, that's a gigantic group body, the fact that you follow a political party or you support a particular sport team, that's a group body, the fact that you are in a profession, that's a group body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We belong to multiple of them. The group body themselves are made of the collective psychic energy of everyone that belongs to it, and it forms something much bigger called the egregoire. That egregoire supports all of the members, but it's not perfect. Just like us, human who compose it are not perfect, it has a higher octave and a lower octave. When you are in need, for example, I've been to uh, multiple uh, uh, sports events, when the team we were supporting was not winning and we chanted the chant for the team and the next thing you know, two goals and the team won, okay? So the, the, the idea is that you can call upon the egregoire or the group body to perform higher. 
uh, um, uh, your fellow doctors or architects or engineers, the people who do the same thing that you do, sometimes you can tap upon their own psychic energy when you are weak with something. The group that we're creating right now as a spiritual community, that it has its own group body. And that group body, even in your dream, can come to your rescue when you're in danger. But that group body, even our group body, is not perfect. It has higher octave, it has lower octave. And the lower octave, a lot of these group bodies, particularly, let's say, sport team, a lot of sport team, for example, soccer team in, in England, they have to let these, these, these people, half of the, st the stadium has to be split in half. The partisan of one side, you know, and because otherwise they go on the street, they, they battle each other if one, one of the other team lost, lost. They kill, they destroy, they, they, they ravage everything. That's the negative aspect of the group body. So, and it's an extreme example, but a lot of time, the karma that we are experiencing, and, and this is true of what's happening in the planet right now, as human beings, we are being put under an accelerator or, um, uh, or an accelerant to move to karma very quickly. And because this is happening so fast, the, our own personal karma, which connects also to the group body karma, are moving very, very or purging too quickly. This is the reason, as I said before, during the eclipse, I stayed in those because I didn't want my karma, one year of karma to, to happen in five hours. I, I, I didn't want that. I, I'm, I'm having, I'm, I'm, I'm keeping, I'm, I'm managing to keep my head above water. I'm not going to go in a tsunami um, uh, and have the water swap wipe me out. So, so it is important for us to understand that when, uh, um, and particularly as it relates to people we're close to. No one can hurt you that you don't care for. Only the people that you love can hurt you. Or the things that you love, like your profession, the thing that you love the most. They are, they are the only thing that, you can, that can hurt you. This is why in Buddhism, the priest, the Buddhist priest, and the Buddhist principle of non-attachment is, is, is being taught everywhere the less attached you are to things of this world. It's not that you don't prefer things to happen a certain way, but if it doesn't happen, you're not forming on the mouth. You're not angry. You're not losing it. And because of this non-attachment, you're able to move through things with neutrality, with even keel, and the, even the accelerants that are coming from the group bodies particularly of humanity. Right now, humanity is under assault. It feels, at least it does, uh, that there are mass extension events that are happening everywhere. And, and we are facing catastrophic loss. So many people have lost their home. The insurance companies in Florida are cutting people out of all, all kinds of benefit. Somebody, who was telling me this yesterday that somebody uh, uh, um, in Florida, a hurricane went through and um, uh, created a sinkhole in a yard, the, the insurance company will pay for everything else, will not repair the cycle. Uh, th th does that make any sense to you? It doesn't make any sense. So th there's a lot of that going on that's causing people a lot of problems because they have to come, with the, come up with the money to make that repair. They have to, that money has to come out of their pocket. So the policies and what what coverage you're getting, given what's going on in the world. And this is not true of Florida. It's true everywhere. All kind of insurance company or looking a way to not pay the policy in the case of an event, of a, of a catastrophic event. So we, we need to be very careful and very concerned about what's happening around us and how we can better support uh, uh, the people in our, in our circle of influence and give us the ability to be secure in... Um, um, uh, and, and by the way, the way you handle the, way you handle the, the, the stuff that's coming to the group body is the same way you, you're handling 
uh, that we said before. Ho'oponopono, try to remember if there's a time you and your family are offended uh, um, through um, internal query, uh, um, uh, this institution, this, you know, whatever the situation may be, try to find a deeper lesson by query. And the moment you get the deeper lesson, ask for forgiveness and then forgive yourself, forgive your family for being so imperfect. <clears throat> because, for example, the way my family dealt with money, I'm, I'm going to give you a perfect example with this. Five generations back, my, my ancestor, very wealthy, 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 wealthy plantation owner, I had a lot of money. Like my great, great grandmother grew up extremely wealthy. But by the time of my, my grandmother was born, they lost everything. And what I've been hearing from my family epigenetically is always about where are we going to get money to do this? So there is a poverty consciousness that has been passed on. And my great-grandmother, although in her youth, or till the point that she was 17, 18 years old, she was extremely well off. So, but, but from that point on, it was always a concern about where we're going to get money. We don't have enough money. We're, so that poverty consciousness seeping through the epigenetic of my family. Okay? So it's a matter of ending it by realizing that there is a, a, a misaligned relationship with abundance because abundance does not come from the job that you're making. The, the force that gives abundance is the mother father. It's like Shmi. And that force, all of the riches in the world do not come from a job. They do not come from an institution. They do not come from a, from a, 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 some, it, it comes from her, from that, because Lashmi not only gives money, but she gives also immortality. She gives health. She gives happiness. She gives joy. She is abundant in everything. And the way I stop that flow for me is that because of the abuse of my dad as an undiagnosed schizophrenic that I experienced when I was a kid, when he tried to kill my mother in front of my eyes, I, very early on, when I was four years old, I remember clearly, I didn't understand what I said, but I, I, I knew clearly I said this word to my, in my side of my head. I will become self-sufficient. I don't need anything from this man. And when you're a child, your father and your mother or God and goddess to you. And because I said I don't need anything from this man, I automatically close the door to receive from God, to receive from Lakshmi. And I'm still unpacking and correcting it today. I realize it's wrong. It was a mistake. It was me as a child because of the trauma I suffered. It was a survival mechanism. I didn't mean to shut that door down. I want from the universe and God to give to me. Uh, and therefore, I am accepting. I'm, this is one of the most difficult things for me to do in this lifetime. Because I'm a giver. I want to give. I want to give. To accept and receive from other people. And from God. Because the way the universe works, once you close once I close that door, I close all abundance and all flow. My, my ancestors, who was the very wealthy uh, possession owner, he didn't have that problem. He was open to all of it. So the part in my epigenetic that's connected to my, my great-grandmother generation and coming forward, that's the negative aspect. The part that's connected to her grandfather, uh, um, um, not her dad, but her grandfather, where everybody was very wealthy and I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm attempted to connect to it. I want to tap into that collective group body awareness that allow abundance and flow to drop into her. Do you see what I'm saying? I, I, I want to be very clear that, that the epigenetic is not all negative. There's a part that's negative and there's a part for me that's positive. So my great-grandmother generation 
the poverty began when she was 16, 17. They, they lost everything. They lost everything. And, and but but two generations earlier, they were extremely wealthy. So I need to tap on that in that in the epigenetic. And I need through my DNA and through that remembrance allow it to come through me and restructure my consciousness to allow me to continue to live in abundance and in flow. And to cook and, and so that I could do the work that I need to do. I, I will have the ease to do the healing that I want to do, to do the, you know, to create Godville, to do whatever it is that I want to do. Does that make any sense? Yes, of course, it makes um, important sense as well to, uh, to recognize and uh, make a, a, a change in, in the connection to the right uh, a pathway for, for that abundance. Is it possible that at some point in the, but you don't mind to ask another question, the, um, the response sort of balancing of the karma from one offense back to the other person and vice versa, where does it start? Does it always start from somebody or yourself or is it possible that it just starts with the other person if you cannot find the offense that you have created is it possible it, that it, it, it could it could have started with the other person but i guarantee you if they're in your life right now and they're offending you i guarantee you in the past life you retaliated it's a ping pong match so it, it just keeps going back and back and back yeah. no, but it, there's no real beginning well the there is there might be a beginning of somebody who started it but what's the point it doesn't matter at this point because you've been retaliating over and over again it's like what's happening with the wars around the world it doesn't matter who started it let's try to give peace a chance let's do uh, something else so this would not have been the first time. Yes, if, it's not the first time that you 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 you, you know you you pitch marble before multiple times, and that's the thing about the remembrance is that when you realize I've done this before, we 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 we, we, we tit for tat we've been doing this for a long time. Yes, yes. So it doesn't matter who started it, who continued it, and the reason why and all that. At this point, give. Let's do something else. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. The, the part of, um, about this also that's important to understand is that, I, and I want to frame this conversation with, and I started the class by saying that we're going to talk about interceding for other people. And I wanted first to talk about the karma, because in order for you to be an effective, effective and, and, and intercession, you have to balance a lot of your karma. You have to do a lot of internal work. And I've been guiding you for years to do this. And we know that right now, giving the bombardment of issue that uh, people around the world are facing, most people on the planet are not equipped to do this kind of arduous work that we're doing. Most people are not capable. They're not going to do it. They, they, are, they would be too overwhelmed. So we have to intercede for them and ask for God to have mercy on them. But you cannot intercede for anyone unless you have their permission law of non-interference, you're not allowed to commingle your energy grid with anyone without consent. That's the first thing. Second thing, uh, you have to also understand that when you are, what you're doing when you're interceding, you're not taking the burden of the person. The idea of the Lamb of God and the sacrifice 
is the greatest lie ever perpetuated by the church on humanity. It is a lie, simply true, true and true. Because that idea came from St. Paul, who never met Christ physically like um, the disciples. Uh, um, if you remember, St. Paul was a convert. He was first a Roman, um, um, a, pros uh, um, a woman, a torturer to the Christian, and a light hit him on the road to Damascus, and he converted. The light of Christ touched him. So, but up to that point, this is around the first, the, 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 uh, the um, 80 or 90 uh, AD, uh, after the death of Christ, or uh, around that, that, that time, prior up to that point, the teaching of Christ as taught by St. Peter and the followers of St. Peter, because the church was influenced by Peter, because God said, you're the rock, and on that rock I will create my church. So, so that, that church and the teaching of God that Christ was teaching through, P through St. Peter was filled with light, love, and abundant living. There was no suffering. There was no sacrifice. There was no nobility in taking a bullet and being crucified for someone. All of that came from Paul. And it, it got embedded in Christianity and from Paul on, and the apostle of Paul on, it became the main central tenet of the Christian church. I want you to understand this. God does not want this from any of you. The only thing you need to do for intercession is to make sure that you're in alignment. Meaning, for example, I've had a call, um, a head call for the past two days. This is not the, the prayer that I usually do for the world to ask for mercy. For the past three, day, three days, I'm not doing that prayer. Because I, when I am disempowered and I'm feeling sick, and I try energetically to connect to the world and the, the group body of humanity and trying to pray for mercy, what I'm broadcasting and sending to the world is the disempowerment that I'm in right this moment. For me to intercede and pray for somebody, I have to make sure that I am in alignment with my God. And a prayer of intercession is nothing more than an act of radiation and generosity where I radiate or we radiate out the peace, the light, the serenity that we know to someone else. And, and I'm going to go over it. I've said it before, but I will remind you again. The way you do it is that I think energetically of the person I'm going to pray for. Let's say, for example, it's for humanity. I think of the entire human body, a billion people around the world, energetically, where is it showing up for me? Wherever it's showing up, I... I have these prayers that I had uh, sent to all of you. And if you have them, I have printed them out. Uh, after I do my torsion feel, I read the, the prayer. And then I, after I read the prayer, I say exactly this. I think of the humanity group body and I say, may the peace, because at that point I'm in alignment. So at first I go to my practice. I do my, 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 my entire practice. I do my I do some mantras in the morning, and after I'm done with that, I do um, I I do deep breath, and after the deep breath, I, I try to sense where my core is, and if there's any information that my core wants to say to me, and then I move into um, having the guardian alliance of light create the torsion field around me. After which I say the, the prayer from the uh, collection of nine prayer I had sent to you. And then once that prayer that that uh, 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 I've said this, I I say the following, just energetically thinking about where humanity is, or if it's an individual, where the person is. At that point, I can feel my core. I am in the blessed field. I am at rest. I am a witness to God and with God. And all I say 
is may the peace, the serenity, and the liberation that I know pass on to you. And I and when I say pass on to you, I see my core and my Antakarana moving from me and energetically wherever I see the person or the collective, I pass it on to them. It's an act of radiation and generosity. You're projecting, you're broadcasting. And when you do this, when you do the shift like this and you project it, what you're actually doing is that you are uh, temporarily providing instant amelioration for the burden that the person actually has. And I typically don't want to hear well, prior to me doing a prayer or of intercession for anyone, I don't need to know all the detail. I need the headlines, I need the bullet points of what the problem is. I don't need the three-page letter, I, I need just the bullet point. And that's all I need because the more I know, if you give me too much detail, my frontal cortex will engage. Pierre and my ego is going to try to solve the problem. And that's the last thing I want to do because the, the, to do intercession, you have to exist between a state of surrender, okay, and uh, because the person you are praying for has no access to the blessed field. You have the access. By you projecting that access into them, you are temporarily giving them the ability to go in front of the throne room of God with their problem. And all I do, I've said this to you before, all I am is a train conductor. I, 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 I take you into the throne room of God and I push you into the platform and I let the light of God take care of you. And all I do after that is wait. I do absolutely nothing. I don't push energy. I don't try to shift things. If it feels heavy, difficult, your ego is involved. You're not interceding. You're, you're actually taking somebody else's karma. Intercession should feel like you're breaking your eyelid. And in fact, when you're done with the intercession, you're going to feel better and heal. If you're feeling you're, you're out of breath, you are absorbing someone else's karma. You are sacrificing yourself. It should feel the exact opposite. The training of the church is poisonous because it, it exists for some of us who have grown up in the church for a very long time. It's so deeply embedded in us and because we've been domesticated to believe this that many of us automatically go. So you, 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 you have to surrender everything to God and let God take care of the rest. And if the next few days you're feeling, you, you, you feel like you picked up something from them, you 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 went the wrong route. You didn't really let go. You have to surrender and let go of everything. And the moment you're in that state where you let go, <clears throat> where you give everything back to God, they say, I'm not capable of solving this person's problem. I don't know how to cure cancer. I don't know how to remove, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 you know, to do spinal cord surgery. I don't know how to remove, to do, I don't know how to stop the world from killing itself or from war. I am giving you everything over and I'm asking for your mercy. And then you let go and you let God do the needful. I don't have any power. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. But I know how to align my consciousness to God and how to bring somebody into that field. And once the healing is done, I bring the person back. That's it. Any questions, any comments? If you're feeling sick or you're feeling unease when you're talking to the person, it's because it's your ego. You're still trying to change the person.
Intercession should mean I do it, I come in, I, I create, I, I, my alignment is there. And because I'm not sick at this moment and my alignment is there, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to connect you and take you into the alignment and I'm going to take you and I'm going to surrender you into it. And then I let the universe take care of the rest. God and the universe is constantly trying to balance and restore equilibrium in, in it, everything. So the person or the individual the situation you present to them, that is out of whack, that is um, um, tilted to one side and completely out of balance, God will find a way to restore the balance. And what you typically happen, because the more you surrender without control and you let go, what's typically happened, the person you're doing the prayer for will, will instantly have a shift and an amelioration in their situation, if not an instantaneous and miraculous repair. And the moment it's done, you just be grateful and remain gratitude. And, and, and moreover, you as the conduit that brought them into that state, you should actually feel very refreshed and almost like high. Any questions, any comments? Uh, Pierre, I just yes. have a quick, I don't know if it's quick or not, but um, remind me again of when you, when you take, I have no problem with taking the person to the blessed field. But then, how do you, I mean, how do I know that I have brought the person back, you know? Okay, so one of the things that I do when I'm the blessed feel, I, mm -hmm. I, 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 will, I stay quiet from, for whatever, how long, and I try to listen with my entire being. And, okay. and as I listen, sometimes I know it's done. Other time, I don't know if it's done. Sometimes the universe, God is working in mysterious ways. And I, mm -hmm. I, um, I ask to the blessed field, is it done? And I get an answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. No, sometimes, no, no. sometimes, sometimes they tell me, leave them in the blessed field. Other times okay. they tell me they need to return two more times for the healing to okay. be. So ask. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, does it matter if the person doesn't view the um um? You know, the person believes truly in the, you know, in Jesus' name and all of that. Does it matter? I mean, it, no, it, it doesn't matter as long as they give you permission. It doesn't matter. Okay. If they give you permission okay. to pray for them, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay. It could be Buddhist, okay. it could be Hindu, they could, it doesn't matter. Okay. The matter right. in which Thank you me. take them to the blessed field doesn't matter. It, it, but as long as you have okay. permission. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Now, here, I just want to have a quick, another quick question. This one is not related to that, but when we were flying to California, um, I saw one of the most Beautiful orange sunset. You you can't see it from the ground, but I saw it in the airplane. And coming back, I saw from the airplane this crescent moon with a star. Mm. And, and 
I'm just wondering if if those two events, I mean, you you can I, you would not be able to see those from the ground, mm-hmm. but they were so vivid and so in my ingrained in my consciousness. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I don't I mean I don't know. <laughs> how to process it or whatever. I mean, I know how to process it. I see it and I feel. But do you think it will have an effect on, you know, when you were saying about the sun? and the No, no, no. It's only during an eclipse. It's only during an eclipse. And I, I, oh, okay. I actually think what you saw, was this at night that you see the sun? It was at dusk that you saw the sunset? Yes, it was. Okay, I think what you saw is Aurora Borealis. It was after dark. It was red orange. It's you saw an Aurora. You saw Aurora Borealis. It, it, oh. Forty-nine state we're seeing Aurora for the past few days because the, we have oh. plus solar flare and, and plasma hole that are leaking all of this plasma toward the Earth. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. And by the way, the crescent moon with the star, there is yeah. a meteorite that's running around the Earth at this moment in the atmosphere of the Earth that they are calling a mini moon. That's what you're seeing. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's going to exit another, I don't know, um, when I, uh, last week it, they said it, it's, it's going to be in the atmosphere. The magnetosphere, uh, the, the the force field of the Earth for the next fifty-one days. So I suppose another forty days or something like that. It's gonna it's gonna rotate around the Earth, and then it will it oh. will be out of orbit and and be propelled out. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? I want to cover. Something else. There's so much I want to say to you. I don't have enough time to cover everything. You can provide prayer of intercession in many different forms. You could say the rosary. You could say prayer from the Bible. You could lay on hand on somebody and let spirit speak to you. You can create a decree or um, 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 and speak the word to allow the energy of God to move through you and to pass on and to do the same thing. To pass on whichever way it takes you to be aligned with God, the serenity, the peace that you know will pass on to the other person, right? This is this is the point. So you could say mantras, sometimes it's ceremonies, like in Hinduism, uh, there's a lot of homas and ceremonies that they do to in uh, or puja that they do on the behalf of people who are in disempowerment, and it's very helpful as well because the intention is the same, is to remove a blockage and obstacle for someone else. And in Hinduism, they understand the role of karma and they have understood it for 6,000 years. And they have created a whole system on how to unblock people. So I, I wanted to bring that to the table and finally say one additional thing. I will not demonstrate it because I don't want to stop messing up with the video broadcast I'm doing right now which is the project projection of begone time and space. And the reason I'm saying this is that I want you to have the capability of uh, resonating and broadcasting and helping humanity in case in danger. We are facing, I, I personally didn't want to share it with the world, but God is telling me to do something else and I'm obeying because that stuff is so powerful. It's celestial magic. It's theurgy. And it's um, the inner teaching of the um, Melchizedek order of neutrality. And, <clears throat> and it's done when you quickly need to create a different condition than what is in 3D the natural laws of 3D ordering at this moment. Let's say there is a danger, there is a uh, some sort of earthquake or tsunami or some sort of disaster that's coming or a tornado or a twister of some kind, and you need to help save people that are in your care. 
this is what I would do. Okay? While you are saying, be gone, time and space, you have your fist closed and you open it three times. Be gone, time and space as you're doing this and you extend your hand out in front of you, the right hand. And when you say, be gone, time and space, you're decreeing with your entire, your restore antakarana and your connection to, and the antakarana, by the way, is, is a connection to all parts of yourself in all dimension of time and space all the way back to God. When you're saying be gone time and space and you project the antakarana out from you, you're, you're projecting that an eye column and you're, you're putting it in the middle of the, sp the space that's in front of you and you keep staring at it. And as you stare at it, you just take deep breath and you allow the guardian alliance of light around this shaft of light that is in all dimension of time and space and you let the guardian move first guardian. Second guardian, third guardian. And you go on and on like this until all of the 12 torsion fields are created. And once you've done this, you have created a measure of God. What do I mean by that? In the Kabbalah, Hakma, which is the second sephirat, the symbol for that is a rod, a magician rod. In the universe, there is no such thing as a straight line. Because if I were to shoot an arrow for me, giving, if there was no gravity and there was endless velocity and no friction, that arrow would eventually rotate and come and hit me in the back because the universe is a torsion field. When a magician struck its rod, it is energetically creating a space in which the magician is trying to manifest an exception from the current law that exists in this dimension to bring forth a different effect that will safeguard and to protect the people in the magician's care. Any questions, any comments? Well, thank you, Pierre. That was exactly the question I was going to ask if you, amongst the examples of ways that you could intercede, uh, uh, the begone time and space. And would you could please remind me uh, what it is that needs to precede that? Is it neutrality that we achieve through the torsion field? Or yes, yes, yes. You, 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 if you're doing your torsion field twice a day or however time you're doing it, even once a day, and you're doing it with sincerity and everything else, you're going to have it. I'm writing about this in the next chapter of the book, and I can tell you that the power to actually do this does not come from me. If you want my permission, you have my permission to do it. But the power doesn't come to me. It comes from your connection with your antakarana. At, because you, in the 4D, you have an aspect of yourself that's there, like the Russian babushka. In the 5D, there was another aspect of it. So you're on top of now because you're projecting it out. So in one sentence, be gone time and space. You're banishing 3D like this. And once the guardian create the torsion field, you're creating a measure of God with something else inside of it, which is I am standing now as a fully embodied Melchizedek. And because I'm standing now as a fully embodied Melchizedek, I'm asking in this instant, whatever it may be, give me safe passage or um, uh, protect the one that I love. Have mercy on all the people here. Whichever the case may be. In, in the case of the movie version of this, uh, was Gandalf uh, on the bridge of Kassadun uh, in the Lord of the Ring, where he was facing the demon called the, the Balrog. And, and he was on this bridge, and he turned around and said to the demon while he's holding the staff, 
He recite all of the powers. Hello, I am the keeper of the sacred flame. I am this, that, or the other. And you, you, you cannot pass. And and the, the demon was still coming with a whip of fire. And then he said, "You shall not pass." And he struck it. And the demon fell in the abyss. And when he resonated, if you see the actor doing it, when he resonated, he resonated it with his entire being and consciousness. So it's a combination of things. It's, it's your complete consciousness and realizing that consciousness control the laws of nature and physics. The laws are not immutable. Consciousness superseded. In addition to consciousness, your voice, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. Your voice, by the decree of saying, be gone, time and space will command it. So the gesture, the voice, and the consciousness. Now, having said all of this, if you're in need and your heart is pure, you will manifest it. Of this, I am 200% sure. I guess I still feel wimpy about that kind of commandment. Um, that kind of power, absolutely. I don't feel like I generate that kind of... Uh, because again, you're making yourself small. You don't see yourself as as maybe I see you and other people see you as the Janice Taylor. That's the goddess. That's what I see when I when I see you seeing. I see a goddess. Mm -hmm. And with your voice and the command of that voice box, that should be like, like this for you. I will work on that. Yeah, yeah. Because to me, I, I've told you this before, multiple times at WeSAC when you're performing, I see you on literally the, the room, even the last time we did WeSAC like, uh, this year, you were seeing Ave Maria and all of a sudden, the, the, everything changed. I saw you in this beautiful garment on a stage, you, you, everything change. You created the measure of God without knowing that you did it. Because you transported me some in a different place. Mm. You're doing it with your singing. But you're still seeing yourself as, yeah, I'm just Janice Taylor and I'm just small. I'm not, nah, 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 nah. this is, this is the, the, the self-talk that we need to change. That's as hard as forgiving yourself. I absolutely, think. absolutely. This is the step we talk to, to have the certainty and the confidence to know <coughs> this is who I am. You've done this your entire career on stage. Every time you come in, you come, you change people's life with your voice. You have it innate in you. Okay. I, I, that gives me an idea of how to approach it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Let us take a five minute break and then we'll do the closing meditation. Five minutes.
Janice, the one thing I can ask, I can tell you to help you achieve that kind of connection, connect more to your torsion field. Do it slower and connect more and be become aware of each collective. And Okay, so when we say, for example, uh, uh, made a piece in the serenity that I know pass on to you and we're doing this for other people who went to see it from them. The Guardian Alliance of Light are doing the same thing for us in 4D, 5D, 6D. They're doing exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay? So if you can connect deeper and you can understand the power that exists in that alignment and you can own that power that it exists in you Mm -hmm. And when you put, you can, you, you will be able to project it out. Mm, okay. And I was thinking about, uh, from what you said, about the process I go through to sing and what that connection is like uh, in that process mm -hmm. that may be akin to what you're just speaking about. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. When you're in that zone, in that complete, like, you know, it's not you anymore. No. No, I'm not there. Yes, yes. That's it. That's exactly it. There's a power much greater that takes over. Yes. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. Thank yes. you. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, let, let us get started. a very deep and slow breath. And as you inhale and exhale deeply and slowly, Allow the universal life force that permeates everything to enter into our lives. Keep breathing deeply and slowly. Let your soul and your awareness drop in the middle of your chest. Forgive me. I love you. And I let go. Please forgive me. Go. 
Let your mind and your heart sync with each other. Notice what you Listen. Listen to the more than 50 trillion cells. That exists in your core and body. And notice what you're not. What kind of information insights and knowing That this part of your body is trying to share with you.
and release all attachments, fears and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. I release all attachment, fears, and control. And I surrender into the great emptiness and endless luminosity. Lord, disconnect me to the fears of regressive changes that are spreading in the ethos of this nation. I surrender this disempowerment unto you bring me the solution set that is needed to nullify this infectious fear In the stillness of your presence, let me hear, feel your wisdom, grant me the obedience to follow you, the strength to implement your decree. For you are the only path to the salvation of humanity in an ascended, loving and caring tomorrow. Amen.
May the peace, the serenity, and the love that I know pass on to everyone. in my circle of influence. Hosanna into the highest. Hosanna into the highest. Hosanna into the highest. Take a very deep and slow breath. feel ready. You can open your eyes.
Well, thank you, Pia. That was very helpful. I wonder if the prayer group that you had sent some time ago, yes. Prayers for the Entrainment of Love and Healing, is yes. the one you're reading from? Yes. Yes, okay. That's the one I've been looking at. I, I, I remember that one, but I must just not have seen it. Thank you. Yeah, it's the third one. Yes. I have two in this email that was in July. I'll, it, no, I'll send you, there's actually nine of them. I'll, I'll send you a document, okay? A PDF. Oh. There's nine of them. Just to be sure, yes, thank you, that I'm on the right, the right one. Yes, yes, I'll send it to you. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. I want to thank you all for being with me tonight. Uh, if you're watching us on Patreon, thank you for your support. For those of you on YouTube, like this video, subscribe to the channel uh, so that uh, the algorithm um, will uh, increase and we can have more subscribers. Love you so much. Thank you, everybody, and I'll talk to you next week. Blessings. Good night, everyone. Love you.